Four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Greetings from an undisclosed location somewhere in the southern United States of America. It's Monday night. And it's me again. Say hello to uh, Alvarez. Hope everybody's doing well since we're last meeting. Uh, I'm gonna do my pre flight. She packed my bags last night. Pre flight. Zero hour, nine a.m. Yep. Yeah. That's right. This is my pre-flight checklist right here. Okay, here we go. Seat belt. Seat in upright position. Flaps. Cables. Houses of the Holy on cassette. Backbone. Spear and magic helmet. Polyhedrons. Let's go! Now it's time for the show. 
I am the show. This is the show, and uh, do you, uh, if you ask somebody for what they had for breakfast, if you ask somebody what they had for breakfast, and they say, first of all, like a lot of people lie about what they eat. I've done it. I certainly have. What did you have for breakfast? Well, an all-white egg omelette, piece of toast, and a good glass of orange juice. That's what I say I had, but what I really had was different. But if somebody says, like Brian Wilson in this clip, listen. Tell me what you had for breakfast. I had uh, two donuts and a diet coke for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Two donuts and a Diet Coke. You know he's telling the truth. He wouldn't. Why well, that wouldn't be a lie? Two donuts. And a Diet Coke. Two donuts and a Diet Coke for two donuts. Two donuts and a Diet Coke for breakfast. Two donuts and a Diet Coke for breakfast. It's often a, a boxing match between willpower and tasty food. Yeah, and willpower is looking a little scrawny. Makes you, that's what makes you wonder if he's taking this seriously, Bob. Makes you wonder if he's really taking this seriously, Bob, or not. Bob. Bob. What's he doing, Bob? Bob, what are you doing, Bob? Bob, what are you doing, Bob? Bob, what are you doing, Bob? Okay, it's time for the trivia. It's trivia. It's trivia. Today. Today. It's trivia. Today. It's trivia. It's time for the it's time. It's time. Oh, it's time. It's time for the Now, I 
have in my hand a box of trivia questions from the Trivial Pursuit, from the Baby Boomer edition of the Trivial Pursuit game. And this game came out in 1983. And it's a Baby Boomer edition. And I'm opening the top, smelling it. Smells real good. Feels good. Oh, look at all those cards. Really cool. Nice. Smells like a Amish library. Okay, first I'm going to take, I got my pen here to mark, to write down my answers. So if I, <clears throat> I'm going to draw a card from the Baby Boomer edition of Trivial Pursuit game and there's six questions on the back. Look at my bird! <laughs> Get my bird. Okay, look. There's six questions on the back of this here card. You understand? Six different categories. If I if I answer all six, I win a hundred dollars. Compliments of Southern Lawn and Pool. Southern Lawn and Pool. Check them out on Facebook. Drawing the card. Setting the card down. Okay. Let me give me a drink of thinking juice over here. Big old sip of that. Alright. And we're off. The first category is television. Blue oval with black lettering TV. What submarine did Admiral Harriman Nelson command in voyage to the bottom of the sea? Uh the Nautilus? Or was that Captain Nemo? But maybe it had the same name. What 1953 Broadway... Okay, sorry. This is stage and screen. It's a magenta oval with the letters SS emblazoned in black inside of the magenta oval. What, 1980, what 1953 brought... Okay, let's calm down. All right, we got to find a little zen place, okay? It's, let's just... Stage and screen. What 1953 Broadway musical introduced the song Stranger in Paradise? Um, uh, Stranger. Uh, oh, I know. That's uh, South Pacific. What? This is nightly news, and this is the Huey Lewis in the News question category. I mean.
What country's last dependency in Western Africa was Gambia? Gambia. What country's last dependency in Western Africa was Gambia? I'm going to say London, England. And I'm going to say Great Britain. Great. Okay, pub, le, pub, le, she, 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 what animals fly infested head impaled on a pole caused a terrified boy to call it Lord of the Flies. Now, there was a kid in that book that they called Piggy, right? Alvarez. Uh, am I right? Uh, you know, uh, What animals fly infested head? I think it was a. What if it was a pig? I'm gonna say pig. What bird wed Charles Robb on December 9th, 1967? Oh, look at my bird! Look at my bird! Look at my bird! What bird wed Charles Robb? What bird wed Charles Robb on this? Oh, lady, what bird? <laughs> Charles Robb. Hmm. Bird. I don't know. What the <laughs> Charles Robb on this ever knows what bird lady bird <laughs> lady bird hey lady bird what's wrong with lady bird hey? what country singer hit it big in 1969 with yesterday when i was young <laughs> glenn campbell campbell glenn campbell glenn campbell glenn campbell glenn campbell glenn campbell glenn campbell Bell, Glen Camp, Bell, Glen, Glen Camp, Bell, 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 Glen Camp,
said a pigs and I just said pig. You know what? I'm gonna count Brit and then I'm gonna count pig and I'm gonna just try to be a little bit more. Oh, Linda Burn Linda Bird Johnson. I put Lady Bird. I was close. I was also close. I said Roy Clark. I said Glenn Campbell when it was Roy Clark. Well, that's not really close. It'd be closer if it was Buck Owens, right? Two out of six. One way or another, you got two minutes to miss. So give me three steps, give me three steps, mister. My bird. Oh, look okay. at my bird. No $100 for me. No $100 for me. Get that, get that, get that. commercial break. Be right back. All right, right after this. This summer, the president of the supermarket <gasps> is a baby <laughs> from Tristone Pictures. <laughs> the most infantile comedy of the year. <laughs> That's guaranteed <laughs> to make you soil your diapers. Clean up on aisle 16. Rated R for adult language and situations of extreme violence. Now is the time on the show where we do a thing called Five Reasons Why. Five reasons why John Wayne and Bruce Wayne are more alike than you may know. John Wayne and Bruce Wayne. John Wayne isn't his real name. He had another name. So it's a, sort of like an alter ego, if you will. He was born... Uh, Marion... I don't know his real name. I, I'll... But he was born, but he changed his name with John Wayne. So, Bruce Wayne is Batman's alter ego. Number four, John Wayne became a star in 1939, beginning his career, essentially. And Bruce Wayne slash Batman was created that same year, 1939. Number three, both were named after Mad Anthony Wayne, a... One of the founding fathers and a, an American soldier. And one of the founding fathers. Number two. John Wayne's father was a pharmacist. And, which is the medical profession. And Bruce Wayne's father was a doctor, which is also... Isn't that interesting? Well, I don't beat out. I, uh, I uh, did not know that. Okay. Number one, David James Elliott. He's an actor. He played, he was Jag um, on Jag. He was Jag. 
Harm. Harmon. He played John Wayne and uh, a guy named Bruce on a TV show called Scorpion. That's the way love goes. Five reasons why. We'll be right back Point. after this Beyond. message. From the producers of Mr. God. And the director of Chauncey's Game. Line Cinema's latest horror masterpiece. Guess what time it is now? You'll never guess. Guess. Okay. Wait. You get three guesses. Okay. What's your first guess? No. That's not it. What's your second guess? No. That's not it. 
What's your third and final guess? You are correct! It's time for the Andy Griffith Clip. This clip is from an episode called, I don't know, I think it's called Opie and His Merry Men. I'm not sure. Anywho, it's a... Uh, Opie and his friends are gathered listening to this hobo talk, talk about, talk about uh, Robin Hood. He's going to talk about Robin Hood. There. Yeah. Yeah. Roll the clip. Good. I hope I'm not depriving you, boy. Ah, nah, we can, nah, we nah. can always get plenty of more hot dogs mm, at home. Good, good. Tell us more about Robin Hood. Yeah. Well, the great thing about Robin Hood was that he was always doing good deeds. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. That's what made him famous. Yep, he took from the rich and he gave to the poor. Any of your folks rich, hmm, boys? I don't, I don't know. know. Oh. Well, if you was poor, you'd know it. Wouldn't even know where your next meal was coming from. Now, you take me. I'm poor. But I ain't complaining. On account I got a bad leg, I can't get any work. Oh. What happened to your leg? Well, I don't like to talk about it much, but as long as you ask me. I was working on a CB and Q. That's a railroad. A fireman on a locomotive. And then one day, I saw a little baby crawling across the tracks. A baby! So what did I do? I jumped out of that cab, and I ran down the track ahead of the train, and I grabbed up that baby, and I flung it. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, I flung that baby right into a nice, soft pile of leaves. But me, well... I didn't make out so good. What happened? That's what happened. Multiple fracture of the patella umbilicata. A game leg. Of course, I saved a human life, but shucks, I don't want any credit for that. The baby was all right. All right. <clears throat> that baby today is president of a supermarket. You think he ever took the trouble to thank me? No, sir. Rich folks have short memories. That's why I'm with Robin Hood. Because he takes from the rich yeah. and he gives to the deserving poor. That's how they got in trouble with the sheriff. How is that now? The sheriff of Nottingham. He was the bad oh, yeah, guy. Don't yeah, you remember? That's, right. yeah, yeah. Right. that's sheriff's for you. And I had my share of troubles with him. What kind of trouble? They're always after us poor folks. After us to keep on the move. They stay after us. All the time. Never let us be. After us! After us! His pa's the sheriff. He ain't. He is too, Sheriff of Mayberry. Well, he ain't a bad guy. Look, son, uh, that sheriff and me are sheriffs. Uh, first thing about sheriffs, well, they take their job as too serious. I'll bet your pa does Well, too. Uh, he ain't a bad guy. Of course he ain't. And you ain't gonna fix it so she's gonna act like one now, are you? I'm shaking my head. No. That's a good no. one. Maybe you shouldn't tell him anything about me at all, or about my little place here. Cause I say, he might not understand the way you do. Okay? Mm. <laughs>
Who would you like to see, or who would win in a competition to improv improvisationally make things? The professor from Gilligan's Island, B.A. Baracus from the A-Team, or MacGyver? Who would be your go-to guy if you had if you had to have like a machine gun built out of uh, things found in a toy factory, for instance? Who would your go-to guy be of those three? I think I'd have to go with uh, MacGyver, honestly. this comedy piece written about Apollo the 13th. It was a mashup of Apollo 13 and Friday the 13th and I had it had the idea. thought it was original but I was watching a, a clip very short clip from Mad TV and I think they beat me to it because anyway Mad <laughs> Scooped by Mad TV once again. I think what we'll do is let's take some calls. Go to the phones. See who's out there. And the, this is. Okay. Buford from Dumas, Arkansas. Hello, Buford. Hello. Just want to say this little show of yours is all right. Thanks, Buford. Just all right, and that's it. Just all right. So clever. So sophisticated. So. See you next week. Sure. Bye. Bye, Buford. Next we have Next is Xanthar the Enumerator from Green River, Utah. Xanthar the Enumerator from Z Green River, Utah. You will impress me by my full title. Xanthar the Enumerator. That's Cool. Now, what's your comment and or question? I will ignore your impudent tones for now. <laughs> I desire to know what Alvarez eats for breakfast. Oh, Alvy? Did you hear uh, Xanthar's question, the enumerator? <laughs> Sir, could your, uh, your highness repeat your question, please? Greetings, Alvarez. <laughs> what do you typically have for breakfast? <laughs> That sufficiently satisfies my curiosity. You are dismissed. Anything else, dude? Excuse me. I mean, anything else, Xanthar the Enumerator? Your Highness. That is all for now. Be thankful that I will not blast you all into atoms. At least, not for now. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now we go to Spokane, Washington, where we have Wrathchild. Hello. Hey. hey, what's up? You need to go to commercial. I know. Just play them all at once. Okay, here goes. Disaster. A monkey with a chainsaw can run Las Vegas for six minutes. Yes, a disaster 
Indian and Stan gets what's for dinner. That's right, we all want to learn, then get potential disaster energy instead of potatoes. All offers void in Colorado and first place in the Mississippi Gulf Coast. This message paid for by the Jimmy Conway Council. You may know who we are, but we know who you are. It's what's for dinner. That's right, we learn, then get potential disaster energy instead of potatoes. All offers void in Colorado and first place in the Mississippi Gulf Coast. This message paid for by the Jimmy Conway Council. You may know who we are, but we know who you are. No wonder. Think about calling me, all right? Um, I didn't have my headphones I'm off. I'm going to say, oh, yeah? I, did, I, didn't. Well, yeah. I had my I headphones so. off and it threw me on. Why? I had my headphones <laughs> off and it threw me off. Two off. Two off. So, I'd kind of like to play the feud. Let's play the feud. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Top eight answers on the board. Tell me an ingredient a baker uses that might be a good name for a stripper. Um, I'm going to say decorating gel. Um, yeah. I'm going to say... All-purpose flour. Tell me an ingredient a baker uses that might be a good name for a stripper. Leavening agent. I'm going to say buttermilk, cream of tartar, ground cinnamon. It's time to start a new chapter. 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 Alright, uh, let's hold on. Time to start a new chapter. Um, that's, uh, something's wrong. Just a little filler. Top five times of day. Number five, three thirty. Number four, two o'clock. Number three, nine fifteen. Number two, eight oh seven. And number one, midnight. Five stars named after cars. Number five, Harrison Ford. Number four, Piston Honda. Number three, Chevy Chase. Number two, Abraham Einstein, Abraham Link. Number one, Freddie Mercury. Five names that alter the, no, five good double bills. Number five, J Tom Petty and Johnny Cash. 
Number four, George Strait and Marvin Gaye. Number three, Sticks and the Stones. Number two, Counting Crows, Cameron, Cameron Crow, and the Black Crows. Number one, Will Smith and Slappy White. Will Smith and Slappy White, that would be... Looks like he gave me a uh, it's a oh it's a boxing match. Let's listen in. In this corner, weighing in at 133 pounds from deep in the heart of Texas, it's Will Power. In the opposing corner, weighing in at 1.5 ounces, fresh from the oven, it's Cupcake. There's the bell, and here we go. Both fighters circling each other around center ring, bobbing, weaving, testing. Would that we could hear what is being said between these two combatants right now. Oh, Willpower lands a hard right hand on Cupcake's frosted top, knock, knocking off a few sprinkles. And wow, Cupcake with a vicious flurry of punches. Staggering willpower backward. The referee breaks him up. Willpower looking a bit shaky on those already spindly legs. Willpower with a half-hearted swing and look out. Kate, Cupcake with a stunning left hook. Rocking Willpower's head backwards in a concerning fashion. Willpower tries to block, but Cupcake is lending a hell of blows down upon him. Oh my. Will someone please stop this? Will someone please stop this massacre? That's it. That's it. The referee steps in and Will Power's corner has tossed in the towel. It's over. Will Power never stood a chance. It was a dark and stormy night. I was alone in my study reading a large and strange novel when I heard it. It started as a low pulse, a sort of mild rhythmic disturbance, but quickly grew into a pounding, a truly rattling noise, shaking up long settled fears and echoes of misdeeds. I was slowly, but with escalating intensity, torn from the paragraph I was currently living in. The pounding seemed to reach a menacing crescendo and level off there. It was on this level when I realized that the noise I was hearing was someone knocking at my door. It was the kind of night that a knock on the door could never be good news. 
all this began a battle within my head. On one side, forces were gathering quickly to just ignore the intrusion and silently wait for the moment to pass. On the other, a stronger army mustered to pick up my legs and see who it was. Call it morbid curiosity. Almost without the consent of my senses, I began moving to the door. I slowly pulled it open. Nothing. No one was there, only the rain and the thunder. I quickly shut the door because the world of gloom that existed beyond the perimeter of my porch light seemed to want to attack me. Who knows what could possibly leap out of there? About ten minutes later, this all seemed trivial almost as I sank back into my book. Rain, thunder, rain, thunder. Again, the knocking began. This time I grabbed a wooden baseball bat that I keep handy and sprang for the door. I didn't know. I guess I wanted to catch whoever or whatever was out there off guard by snatching the door open somewhere. So that's what I did. Never before has the delineation of outside to inside been so sharp and in focus. Safety to danger, order to chaos. Now, sometimes you just know when a certain event will live forever in your mind. Never will I forget the sudden rush of cold air from the outside. Never will I forget how I tightly gripped the bat which pointed uselessly and harmlessly to the floor. Never will I forget the person who I saw when I opened that door because it was me. Hello, Chris. Hello. See it? 
Sie doch. Mhm.